Um, can you see? <laughs> um, the sun is rising. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But it's coming up. Um, but I wanted to talk. I saw this. I saw this shirt at Target yesterday. Look at it. Compton Cowboys. And it is Los Angeles. It's cute, huh? I saw horses. I woke up yesterday. I was knocked the fuck out, and I was knocked the fuck out. And these flies kept had started coming, and messing with me, and woke me about my sleep. I'm out there, and I joked up, and I looked, and there were horses. There were horses, and so. Okay, let me tell this full story. Let me tell this full, full story because now I'm starting to put it together. Um, so the day after the hurricane, I mean, after the tornado, at night, because <clears throat> it rained the next day. So at night, I uh, walked up to go to my little spot and the sun was out. So the sun was out on one side, but the rainbow. So I saw the rainbow and I took a picture of the rainbow. I'm probably gonna make it as a thumbnail. Listen, my thumbnails are hilarious to me because they're so ugly. <laughs> they're so fucking ugly. And sometimes my own videos pop up on my timeline. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like what the fuck? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> like <laughs> I could easily get combo, <laughs> but I am not in no picture taking mood. <laughs> I am in no picture taking mood. Like I will do y'all justice better later, okay? <laughs> later, later, later. I will do it. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> um, it's a journey, right? So, um, so I saw the rainbow. And spirit had whispered to me, like, it's not going to flood anymore in your life. Like, the flood is over in your life. So just as the promise was for Noah and him, that God not going to do no flooding no more. That's literally what it was for my life, right? God was like, your flood is over. And so... <clears throat> The wing stop ice. It's still in my canister. Okay, so um listen, I had every time I eat wing stop, my stomach gets towed the fuck up. Like I had that to, but this time it was reasonable. Okay, both times was it was my fault. So I think the second time it I had the shits because it's been out it was out for a long time. I think I did ranch. I did my chicken and ranch the next day and it was refrigerated, so I think that was me. And this time I had the atomic. I don't know why I got that atomic, but whatever, whatever, right? Whatever, whatever. So, getting back into the story. <laughs> and so, God said the rainbow. God said the rainbow, right? It was like, I don't even remember what it I guess this was Friday. Saturday. No, it didn't happen Saturday. Okay, so Saturday. Okay, I got a whole, I got a full story. Okay, so yeah, so Saturday, nothing happened. Sunday, I was sitting, uh, charging my phone, chilling, whatever, whatever, and what drove past me was a car, and attached to the back of it was the white carriage, the um, the Cinderella carriage. Like you never know how the pumpkin turned into the carriage, and she went to the the ball. So that's what it was. Then yesterday, the horses, the horses came. And I was like, am I having a Cinderella moment? Like, am I having a Cinderella moment? Like, is she done cooking and cleaning for her mean stepmother and her stepsisters? Like, right? And so Saturday, what happened on Saturday was I asked my mom for $120. I said, hey, can I have $120 so that I could get my work clothes? She was like, you're a liar. 
you know, yada, yada, yada. If you got a job, send me proof that you have a job, blah, 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 blah. Now, I was not lying to her from the get-go. I need to get these stripper shoes. <laughs> I need to get these stripper shoes, right? And I had found a different way. I was like, okay, I could order them on Amazon. And I had a couple of clothes with it. Like, I was like, okay, let me get, like, two more. Because I was like, I still kind of feel insecure about showing my stomach. I was like, so I'll get, like, a cute little sexy, like, one little piece, right? And I was like, okay, I got a little one little piece. All these things were, like, reasonable prices. It all came up. And I was like, I'm going to get a hair ponytail weave. Everything was going for my job. <laughs> um... And so it came up to like 106. So it's still in my car, it's 106, right? Uh, I was like, okay, they have Amazon lockers around that's close distance, so I'll get, order it, it'll come to the locker, and then I have the materials, then boom, boom, bam. A bitch could get, start getting, you know, getting it together so she get off the fucking streets. She all da 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 da. So then I had to lie. So I <laughs> drummed up this whole little letter or whatever, whatever, for an employment offer. I only screenshotted half of it because I was like, you don't need to know the salary. You don't need to know all that business. And she, and then I would continue to block her because I didn't know what her response was, but she never sent the money. Spirit got on me. Spirit got on me because I told y'all we had a reading. I don't remember which reading it was. Oh, it was, I think it was our April new moon reading. Our Taurus new moon reading. In that reading, Spirits came with the song, Same Old Mistakes. Why do you make the same mistakes, right? Stop thinking it's the only option. And feel like, feel like a brand new person. Then why do you do the same old mistakes? Well, I can never get in without the song together. Feel like a brand new person. Then why do you make the same mistakes? Stop before it's too late. I'm gonna feel like a brand new person, right? Stop thinking it's the only option. And so Spirit got on me. Spirit was like, stop thinking that your mom is the only option when it comes to helping you out. I'd rather you ask me. Spirit's like, ask me. Ask me. Stop asking her. Because every time you ask her, you diminish, you get degraded. You get you know, cast down, you get talked to like shit, you get treated like shit, like you, you go from here, 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 here. I know, I know what her positioning is. I know she is your mom and she's supposed to, it's her role as a mother that she's supposed to help you out. Just as if you was a mom, if your child needed anything, no matter what age they are, you would help them out. I know, but stop thinking she's the only option for your source of aid and refuge and i said okay so i said don't ask her for no motherfucking money no more this beer made me lose my cash app card so that i'm in to, to make sure it gets in my head not to ask and sometimes it still be tempting like i think that she's my only option i think that she's my only last resort like i'd be like okay like i don't have nothing i have nothing and i'd be like and instead of being patient, instead of waiting on spirit, I will be like, I'll just ask her. And I don't never ask her for that big of an amount. Usually when I'm asking her for money, it's $10. Um, since I moved out, since I moved in here, I probably, I only asked her for $12. That, the most I asked her for was $12. And that was when I had gotten the wing stop. Um... Oh, and I had asked her, could she pay my phone bill um, until, and I'll pay her back once I get the job, right? I'm trying to pay her back because I'm just stripping job, but it's not her business what type of job I got. It's like if I said, I'm a, I don't tell her I'm going to pay her back when I ask for money. I'd be like, hey, can I have this? But this time I said, it was like, I will give you the money back. Let me borrow it. And so when it's something positive for me, it does. It, it, she never wants to give, right? She never wants to give. But if I'm doing something for self-destruction, it seems like it's easy to get the money from her. When I'm asking money for weed, bitch, it's easy. And then I also had a conversation with Spirit yesterday about weed. And we talked about how my journey since when I had started smoking weed. I was an over I was an overachiever, right? And I was able to do multiple things. 
then when I got 24, like 24 going on 25, this was the second semester of my of grad school. I started smoking weed. I had just ended up going starting my uh, my dark night of the soul. Right? I'm assuming it's it was something on my awakening. Whatever, whatever. Shit hit the fan. That's when my awakening was starting to come. Realization that year was 2020 20. 16 was a realization that I started to see my mom in a different light than what it was because we were like this And the only reason why we were like this was because I was over giving I it was an unrequited love, right? Like I had to be the one to always listen to her always did the things and all of the things right But then when I started to want reciprocity when I got tired of seeing her patterns of like when a nigga come around She want to kick you to the curb shit That's when I was like, okay that's when change, the dynamics change. And so, um, I had started smoking. And I noticed that, like, I had, that's when I had became my most obese. Um, I couldn't keep a job. I started to not be able to keep a job. Um, I was able to still make it through grad school with straight A's. That was no, that was actually no problem, but that was because I was just, it was easy to copy and paste some shit. Um, I didn't want to hang out with people. I was more grouchy. Um, I, instead of wanting to hang out with friends and do things with friends, I wanted to hurry up and go home and smoke. Um, I couldn't keep up with my job administratively um, as a therapist, like, and things like that. Like, it was a little bit more slower but also that was just because I be talking to <laughs> I be at work talking and shit that was another reason <laughs> but that um honestly I'm like looking at this I'm like but the main struggle was entrepreneurship it went against me being able to be like an entrepreneur like so like I would spend money on weed instead of spending money on a product right getting on materials that I need or um, I will be like, okay, I'm gonna do this, that, and the third, but then it takes me forever to do this, that, and the third. Um, I would space out with a painting instead of being real focused in painting. So there were things that we, you know, and look at my life now, homeless, right? And Spirit had told me a couple of years ago, two years ago, like, if you don't stop smoking, you're gonna end up on the streets. And I, I still continue to smoke, and then I ended up on the streets. Um, and so now moving to texas one of the things that was hard about moving to texas i was like dang it's illegal to smoke in texas like what am i gonna do like maybe i should stay in california but yesterday i was sitting and two different boys two different guys asked me about weed well the first one he was like a little hispanic boy and he was digging a trash can i'm thinking he's trying to find food so i gave him two dollars now I needed the two dollars myself but i gave it to him right and you know he was he was i guess he was looking for <coughs> a blunt wrap and he was like so i get basically i gave him the money for his blunt wrap right because he was like do you know somewhere i could go and get a blunt i was like if you go walk through the back the, the path and go to mcdonald's there's there's places where you can go get a blunt a blunt wrap right and he was just like tweaking because he was like i gotta smoke like i gotta smoke this weed right then I sat under the, the bridge. I had sat under the, the little passway um, where the river, where I like to sit, because it's like nice and cool. Another a white guy came, was a white boy. Um, now, mind you, we probably all around the same age, unless they probably like 25. They might be a little bit younger than me. Um, but the white boy was like, "You smoke Kush? You smoke Kush?" I was like, "Nah." But the way he was tweaking, I was like, "All right, spirit. <laughs> all right, all right, like." You ain't gotta tell me a gazillion time. Like I already said, I was not gonna smoke no weed out here. Um, um, but I was like, spirit, uh, 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 like hell no, I ain't smoking no weed out here. Like, cause sometimes I'll be like, oh, I am not smoking Texas weed, and then I see somebody be like, now what is the thing with weed, <laughs> right? Or sometimes I'll be thinking like, oh, I should get me a vape. Like sometimes I'll be wanting to get a vape because I know this the 
smoke shops and stuff have vapes. But I'm like, I also, I don't want to be altered in an altered state. Like, especially like right now, like I need to keep my senses and, and my, you know, everything. I need to be as alert as possible. Like, I can't be high and then what if I get attacked or something and then boom, boom, bam. I'm like, what? Right? Also, I'm going into a, a place, I'm going into a field that is about beauty, right? That is very strict on beauty and beauty standards and wait i can't be having the 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 munchies and shit like that because i gotta shake this ass <laughs> right i gotta shake this ass <laughs> and so um i have lost tremendous amount of weight right i have lost a lot of weight i was looking yesterday i was like damn i'm little like like i'm little it's it <laughs> but like in terms of like damn like i ain't never been like this little and so uh it's crazy so i was just like no like i don't i i want to continue to live a sober life like i enjoy like even when i had drunk the wine the other day drunk the wine i was like I, and thankfully i wasn't even like tipsy or anything because it took a long time for me to drink it um but it's just funny because I, I love wine. I told y'all I love me some wine. The only, my only kryptonite right now is these damn black and milds, okay? <laughs> it's these damn black and milds. <laughs> they my kryptonite right now. But this finna stop too, okay? This is a finna stop too. I think this is helping with navigating stress. I'm learning, you know, I'm horrible with how to navigate stress. I'm good with self-care and shit like that. But as soon as a stressful co a situation comes, I start spiraling. I have yet to feel, to navigate how to manage stress. <laughs> Cause when she happy, bitch, I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, but getting back into it. Spirit was like, stop making the same old mistakes. Stop asking your mama. So then the man came and he gave me $60 the other day. Then today he gave me sixty dollars again. How much is sixty? Is sixty one twenty? I asked her for one twenty. God provided the one twenty. Now it was in cash, so I could order it from Amazon. I actually got the things that I need, like food, right? And the crazy thing was, I ran through that twenty dollars, the sixty dollars in two days. One was to get the, you know, one twenty went to the offering. Another twenty went to fucking Chipotle. One order at Chipotle. The second. The third twenty dollars went to I got this water, I got me some yogurt, I got some wing stop. You got me a black and mild, and I gave the little boys some dollars. So yeah, like you know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? I was like, this this buddy went to food. This buddy went to feed me. <laughs> And we stopped, we stopped was cheaper than fucking because it's the 76 wings, 76, 76, I'm gonna get some more today. Instead of 10, I'm gonna get 15. Or I might get 10 and get some french fries this time. I'm gonna get french fries this time. But the closest thing that's there is McDonald's and the cheapest thing you get from McDonald's is that $3.99 when you get a little small fry, you get a, a thing in there. But I was thinking, I was like, dang, what am I gonna eat today? Um, how am I gonna eat today? And he gave me, he was like, I've been looking for you, and he had me $60. Fuck the hotel, bitch, thank you. <laughs> right, like, thank you, like, I really appreciate that shit. Um, I really appreciate it. But fast food is fucking expensive. You know, I could've flipped and reversed you know what I could have did with $20 at a grocery store if I was cooking? A lot. If I wasn't fancy. You know what I mean? Like, I got a little, little potatoes, get you some tortilla. Okay, get you a little $2 steak. I probably $10 right there. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't gotta be fancy. Just get you a little $2 steak. They always got a little $2 steaks. $5 steaks. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna get Chipotle as nasty as it is. I can't believe it. But there's nothing really, there's no eateries around here that's like, oh bitch, I really wanna eat. They have restaurants a little bit, but 
So I was telling him, guy, he was like, the tornadoes aren't often, he said, but August, September will be hurricane season. He was like, that's when it gets bad. But I wanted to actually, I wanted this, the, the video that I wanted to do was about Jesus, okay? Something about the name Jesus. We gotta finish our, se our series. It is the sweetest journey I know. And I love, oh, I love the name Jesus. I love, I love, oh, I, I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. It is. But you see, I got money. Now, I was like, I don't mind having a little sugar daddy spirit. If you want me to have a little sugar daddy. <laughs> I was like, I'll just tell the people I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I was just going to tell y'all I'm a hypocrite. Um, but, I was like, I don't mind. But, it's like, you ain't got to get your Gucci. Just watch me. But, the storm is over. The hardship is over. Your bad luck is over. The miracles is here. The impossible. I wanted to do a um, yesterday I wanted to do a reading on broken hearts for the broken hearted but I don't think I'm gonna pull the cards I think we're just gonna talk for a second now I'm only Broken hearted, life's not over. I can start again. And so, you know, I was like, this has been a very emotional. I was wondering, I was asked questioning myself the other day. I'm like, why am I so emotional? I was like, well, my period about to come. But I've just been so. I was like, you know, I've been telling y'all, I've been feeling numb my smile like I, I don't have a smile that reaches my eyes anymore i just been a little downtrodden and shit like that right and I've been trying to figure it out like why am I feeling this way and the spirit was like think about your year think about your 2024 and what this year has been like for you for the first half right like we're now at the halfway mark we're about to approach in a week the halfway mark it's about to be the sixth month right Leading up to it, it's like, what has been happening since January? And I was like, bullshit after bullshit. It feels like, exactly. It feels like, you know, you lost, you literally lost a family member to death. And then I had to cry again. Like, even though I still connect with my cousin from the, uh, as she's on the other side, it still hurts that she's gone. Right? And this is the cousin, this is my cousin that, honestly, I have the most affectionate relationship with her than I have with any other family member. No other family member am I hugging on. We hug on each other. She gives me kisses. You know, we, it's always just nothing but love and laughter. And I just remember being, you know, I'm glad that my memory of her, I mean, my final memory, my final moment, I should say not memory, but my final moment with her was us playing Uno. We played Uno. You know, we got around, we all played Uno. And then the before that, like maybe like a week or two before that, we went to the beach. And so those were my final moments with her. Um, and I'm grateful for that because I had went back and usually I don't go with my family by it. But Spirit had told me to go back and hang out with my family last summer. Last summer and shit like that, right? And so I did. Um, and I'm so grateful that I did because I, that, was, that was the last time that I got to saw her. Um, because if not then, I would have known when the last time I would have saw my, I would that the last time before that that I, oh it was at yes I saw her three times I saw her at church I saw her, I saw her three times last year, which was a blessing. And those three times I wasn't gonna go, I wasn't gonna go to oh before then oh she's in my she's on my channel. That's funny because there was one time she had stopped by my grandma's house, um, and I was recording. 
I was recording a video, and, uh, recording a painting session on here, and she heard her dude had stopped by at my grandma's house, and he had me fucked up. But I, it was good seeing her. Like we always like we just hug on each other when I see her. It's always just I just always love that. Like I don't hug my mom. Me and my mom don't hug. Okay, I. I couldn't tell you how many times I've hugged my mom. I don't think I've ever hugged my mom, really. Like, not a full embrace hug. Like, there's never been, like, I hugged on my mom. I ain't never hugged her and cried on her. I've cried on a friend before I had hugged and cried on my mom. I ain't never hugged her. Um, we, we, when we say hello, I give, we give each other, like, a cheek, like, like that. But we don't ever hug. I don't never, I don't never receive affection from my mom. Um... <laughs> ever and so she's the only family member that except for my aunt like my aunt I will like I, back in the day I used to be a little bit more affectionate with my aunt like I could lay my head on my aunt's shoulder and shit like that um and things like that but out of all my family members my cousin the one that passed away is the one that is really like a full embrace like we're always hugging on each other um, hugging, she'll, she'll cry on my shoulder and shit, right? So, it's still navigating this loss, like, I just, like, she just died, right? And then, a little bit of that, because of a stupid boy, and mainly, it's just been this loss, especially the loss of this, this relationship with my mom, this loss of the relationship with my grandma, the loss of the relationship with my aunt, but then the betrayal of dealing with my my other my great aunt my grandma's sister um the betrayal dealing with the betrayal of her that that girl that i went to school with that funny acting shit she was pulling you know all that disrespect like it was just like this was a year i got bullied <laughs> i was getting bullied left and right like the fuck <laughs> right um and and yeah we not even gonna talk about the the psychoticness of that boy and so just all of that <laughs> collaboration no wonder like i just like i, I can't i don't want to feel nothing i don't want to feel nothing at all right now you know um and so but i said i wasn't ever going to harden my heart i'm not hardening my heart i'm just taking a break and so I wanted to, yeah, okay, so instead of reading, we're not going to read about Jesus today. I'm going to talk about Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. He's the sweetest name. So Jesus to me, Jesus comes to me a lot when it comes to spaces of my heart, right? Because he is the ruler of the heart chakra. We have, Gan we have Ganesh as our deity as our spirit for the root chakra right he's the the road opener he opens the road so we've been navigating navigating with different deities who are symbolization of transformation and clearing out junk right like like uh oh yeah comes with that destruction like bitch change this shit kali comes with that shit right she like all right you gotta change within he comes right oh y'all pull me out of the roof because she said bitch you you don't have a mom you don't have a mom you finna be a mom but you ain't got a mom you know what i mean like my kids not gonna have their grandma unless they have you know their dads and that depends on how she got whoever it is that depends on how his how his mama is but my kids ain't never gonna have their grandma like that. Like I be seeing people in their stories about they the kids going to their grandma and how their grandparents love them and shit like that. My kid will be, my mom will purposely not tend, tend to my kid. She will purposely not tend to mine. I know that, and I don't. I will never subject them to that shit. My grandma talked about how her her mom's her mom's mom was mean as hell. She was like that she was nice to our cousin but she was mean to us she said but her dad's mom was the sweetest thing ever i would love to have my kids see my aunt i still think about my people a relationship with my aunt 
but I'm not sure. But I wanted to talk about Jesus. And so, oh, how I love the name Jesus. The reason why we're going to do the par I mean, the, the story of Jesus is because I really want to get into the parables. The Spirit told me to go through the whole thing. And I'm like, dang, can we just give some of this and get straight to the parables? But there's other stuff that's going to be there, gems that we need. Because we're actually going to get to know him. do more research and all that somebody said i read an article that was talking about how like he survived his crucifixion and he went to he did a pilgrimage to india and learned about buddhism and all that stuff i thought that was cool because i believe that there's something there was like there's no proof of that but i was like but i believe that flies like this backpack because my backpack got all that damn honey all spilled in it. I was trying to go to sleep. I use it as my pillow. <laughs> it's sticky. <laughs> okay, so Jesus is to me is when you go when you're broken hearted. He's a good spirit guy for that. And so he's been showing up a lot for me this year. And at first I was starting to adopt that, that Christian manip manipulation and fear, fear based tactics, right? I told y'all every time you read, I read a passage or something with Christianity, it's always centered around fear and using manipulation and fear to get you into that religion. If it's really a, a heart-based religion, why do you need to use fear, tactics of fear to get fear people into practicing? You need to practice this or you're gonna be of abomination. And I think that their second coming that they talk about with Jesus is so, so contradicting to his teachings. Because how is he an ember? How does he preach love, 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 forgiveness and things like that? But then y'all saying he's coming back into this world. He's coming back again. But he's coming back to, to destroy. I don't believe that. He wasn't even into people worshiping him when he was alive. He was like, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody that I did this for you. Don't tell nobody that I that I helped you. And then when he, he was helping people, he was healing people. He was like, if you believe, then you are healed. He didn't say I healed you. But these men, these men, people's interpretations of, of Jesus and turning it into a religion, right? Remember, that religion was based on keeping black folks enslaved. And so, I just like saw my cousin in my face, like. I just felt that I was like, oh, I look like her smoking. Even though she's light bright, she's a little light bright. <laughs> we always thought a little light bright. <laughs> Hi, Yella. Um, but I just saw her in my face just now. <laughs> it was just funny. Um, but he's of love. And so his teachings, his parables are really for the people who are brokenhearted. So when you experience betrayal, when you experience, um, an enemy when you experience the swords when you're navigating through the swords right he says still move with love and so i ain't never gonna stop being loving <laughs> it, it, it's not in me to be a fuck, fucked up person i was talking to the homeboy when we had hung out he was like he was like i got a homie he was like he got money he was like you could finesse him i said nah i said that's not me I don't, I don't intentionally go out to use people. Like that's never been, that's why I be so blessed. 
you know, I was walking yesterday, I was like, you know, I'm so blessed. I get luck happening to me, supernatural things happening to me because I never had the intentions of ill will towards people. I'm, I've always been the giver. And so to be in this position where I have to be the one given to is teaching me to receive. Like people giving me things is things for me to receive because had, had I had, like my grandma used to ask me like, do you have money? I would have like $3 in my, in my pocket. I'd be like, yeah, granny, I got money. She was like, how much money do you have? And I'd be like, $3. She was like, here, take this. She was like, thank you for, my grandma would always be like, thank you for not being greedy. My grandma would always be like, thank you for not, my grandma, she's in an older state, so she, you know, she can't, my aunt, my aunt controls her finances now, so she don't have money in her pockets and things like that. My grandma, but when she have money, she'd be like, here you go. Here you go. My grandma had never, my grandma has always been my giver, right? Like the person, the source of my mama don't never ask me for money. Never asked do I have money. It's rare that I'm getting like, she'll be like, here's some money in your pocket. Put some money in your pocket. Right? When she do things for me, it has always been pertaining to education. So people always be thinking like, oh, your mom's such a good mom, blah, 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 blah. But if she only give things for education, and even then, I pretty much fronted everything for my education. I bought my books and stuff like that. And then the things that she did help financially with for my education, to this day, she wouldn't let, let it live down. She throws it in my face all the time. And I told you sometimes abuse can be addicting. Abuse can be addicting. Getting that feeling, getting talked down to, being treated like shit is addicting. You'd be like, I don't feel that because it's, it's somatic, right? I don't feel that discomfort. And so being here, feeling so much peace, I don't feel the fear, I don't feel nothing. Sometimes I want to feel that again. So sometimes I want to hit her up. You know what I mean? And so yeah, so being able to receive and trust and get some, and you know, just be able to take the money that people give me. I don't come, I don't be out here soliciting. I don't be out here begging. I make do with what I do, right? I make do with how, how I do. And sometimes I don't go about, about it in the ethical ethical way. But I'll never be about, you know, stealing money from somebody, robbing somebody, scamming somebody, finessing somebody, you, utilizing love to, to, to get somebody, you know, stuff like that. That's not my thing. And I told her, I was like, nah, that's not my, I was like, that's not me. I was like, I'll figure it out before I do that. Like, nah, that ain't, that ain't my mojo. You know, cause it's not like, even even in the spaces of love, I don't care how many times a man fucks me over. I'm not about to do, I'm not, I'm not about to return that to an innocent person. I'm gonna go into every situation with a clean heart. And because of that, you know, because of that, God blesses me. The spirits bless me. And I give them their offerings of thank you. I barely really be asking my spirits and stuff for stuff. I don't be asking. I be like, thank you. They just know my heart. They know what my needs. They know what I stress about. You know? But it's never for me to be fucking over. So even in your space of your heartbreak don't use that as a, as a as an excuse to change your character don't change your character there's so many people who use betrayal as an excuse to be a jackass and to be a user or to be you know this villain and don't feed into that I know this whole culture, you know, being a hoe, you can be a hoe, but don't be a hoe while you in a relationship. Stay single. If you gonna do that, stay single. It's fun. You ain't gotta, why Why would you subject yourself to having to lie, having to, 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 to cover up shit and shit like that? That's so much stress. Just be single, it's fun. You still can get, you can still reap the benefits. I still go on dates every blue moon. <laughs> every blue moon right um and things like that but
don't first of all don't put yourself into predicament of even being heartbroken like that you know i don't be on a prowl with dating i don't be having a dating profile and going on dates all the time to get fucked over also i don't get fucked over like the rest of y'all get fucked over <laughs> with these dates like with men and things like that men don't fuck me over with cars like me paying for his shit and shit like that um there was only one there was a couple of incidents when i was much younger where guys would use me in terms of like financial shit right but even then they was using me for a meal at taco bell but it was never me um doing so much for a man to where he's fucking me over, right? Um, my ex fucked me over with fucking my friends and shit. But other than that, I didn't. I I don't deal with like such a heavy degree of betrayal to that state, right? But even so, because I don't put myself into the to that situ into that situation. Usually it's in a talking stage. Usually my heartbroken stage is, is really just like me, me over romanticizing a dude and then me thinking we gonna be something and it, it, we don't. But even then, I charge that to the game. I charge that to the to the dating game, right? And I'm over. I'm really dramatic and I really love. I love love bombings. Okay, I love a man that love bombs me. Because it's like I get the best of both worlds, right? I get this short little romance and then this short little attention and shit like that. And then he goes on about his business. I don't got to do the full relationship shit, right? We ain't got to work shit out and shit. I ain't got to communicate and shit. I'm probably a horrible person today because I probably don't know communication. I don't know i don't know if i'm good at communicating i, I know i'm not because i don't really have to talk and, and, and express feelings and shit like that because i've been single my whole adulthood i've been single i've been talking to niggas I've gone on dates with niggas had little situationships but for the most part you know what I mean? Like, I, I ain't had an everyday nigga. Like, you know what I mean? An everyday, all day nigga, you know, since I was 18. And so, but still, I still experience betrayal through friendships. You know, now that's where I have been used at is friends. Because I'm such a big gift giver when I have money and stuff like that. But I don't receive that from friends. But it's okay. I did it out of the kindness of my heart, not for me to receive. Um, but Jesus reminds his teachings reminds you that even in those states of, of, of people in their fuckery don't don't let nobody else's actions change who you are don't let nobody's actions start to have you reaping um, karma and shit like that right bad karma spirit told me you know the reason why I haven't given you money the reason why you you're not high paying like you you see yourself is because you gotta get removed from the people who will use you like your mother if I had a high salary job my mom would ask for money just for the fuck of asking for money she don't need it she'll just ask she's a perpetual liar and so she always calls me a liar everybody know I'm horrible at lying I'm the worst at lying. Like, I'm so I'd be like, uh, uh, and I'd be like, fuck it, I'm gonna just tell the truth. Like, I tell the truth because I'd be like, I'm not about to. No, that's a lot of brain power. No, I tell you the truth. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you finna do? Nothing. Like, I'm, I'm honest to a fault. Like, <laughs> and sometimes I think I overshare and I overexplain on here because I'll be like, just in case they think I'm a liar, like, let me show, like, let me do this, let me do that. But, I'm not the liar, right? And I really loved how this last person that I was dealing with was such a major trigger for me. And really, like, I could never date you because you remind me too much of my mom. 
his mannerisms and everything that he is it helped he helped me understand her in a deeper level but at the same time it's, it's still, still the same thing like i i can't date him like <laughs> I couldn't date him and I thank God that God removed me from that because I could have easily got into that situation and and you know he wasn't rude and nasty until this year he didn't start being rude and nasty until this year but last year talking to him like he was grumpy he would be a little snappy and agitated but he wasn't like disrespectful and this year was where he really came with that disrespect and i was just like i could never <laughs> it's over like it's it really is over like we can't even be friends and he's a cool dude though but we can't because he exhibits qualities of her that i i cannot i can't take i can't repeat that you know i can't repeat that um Um, but don't harden your heart because of somebody else. You could put it on pause. Like right now, my heart on pause. Like I'm not letting anybody in right now. <laughs> it's closed for construction. Like you know what I mean. Like and it's about me learning, learning my behaviors, learning how I address situations of like romance and things like that. But most of my heartbreak, when it comes to comes to love and romance, really, is me. It's me at, at fault. It's me wanting a certain thing so bad that I'm making out somebody to be that, and it's not. You know, instead of allowing a person to be that organically themselves. Um, but yeah don't 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 start fucking people over because you got fucked over you know what i mean don't be a heartbreaker now because heartbreaker you got the best of me oh i just keep on up and run your game on me oh why is it something I should have known right from the start you go and break my heart. This last dude, I didn't listen to none of the signs and wonders of spirit. Okay, I did it. And so I had to go learn the lesson for not listening. I wanted to play with the fire. I see it from the get-go. I know from the first interaction what a dude is going to be about. And I still be like, I don't care. <laughs> I be like, I don't care. <laughs> right? But now, I want to pour love into me. <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to hold you with me. My troubles. But there's something about your love. That makes me weak and knocks me off my feet. Right now, I just want to knock me off my feet. Like, I want to sweep me away. I want to get me, you know, romance me. I want to shower me with gifts. I, I want to do so much more for me. Going beyond solo dates. I've gone on solo dates so many times. I go to concerts. I go on trips. I've done all of those things by myself. But it's more to that. I just, I just want to like just shower me. And I want to love the spirit realm more. Love God more. Love my deities more. Love spirituality more. You know? And then I want to have children and I want to shower them with love after I shower me. <laughs> you know? I'm not in a rush to have kids because I'm not ready. I'm not ready to take care of folks right now. 
Um, right now, the caretaker, I'm my caretaker. I want to take care of me. I'll take care of you. Even if you got a man out. <laughs> na 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 Take care of you. <laughs> I will. <laughs> That's how I say that. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, don't harden you. Don't harden you. The world needs love. The world needs love. The world needs good-hearted people. Even if they're not receptive to it, at least they could, at least when they think about you, they'd be like, that was a loving-ass bitch. <laughs> I know that's for sure. She had a good heart. She wasn't on no bullshit. That's for them to navigate. That's for them to deal with. My friend that I had loved dearly, that I, you know, been over backwards for, anything he needed, he knew he'd come to me. You know, when he fucked me over, it's his guilty conscience. It's him going to his therapist talking about our friendship. But he still ain't telling the truth. He's still acting like he the victim. Like I did him wrong because I, I ended our friendship. I, don't, I ain't cussed him out. Every time we have an exchange, it's still love. I still give love. I'm like, hey, I wish you the best. Hope you're doing great. But that's about it. And that's mainly because he be pulled into my energy. I think now he finally gotten his closure. Because <laughs> I don't be feeling his energy no more. You know? It's that girl. That other girl, you know? She, she, I helped her and her family move. I put her into my home. I fed her. Not because I was looking for anything. Not because I wanted to be seen like, oh my God, I'm such a saint. It was just something that I did. That's for her. You know what I mean? People be mad that you walk away, but it's like, the fuck? I don't care. Still love them. There's no hatred in my heart for any of them. I don't hate, hold hate in my heart. Uh, I don't hate my mom. Sometimes I do. I ain't gonna hold you, sometimes I do. But I have to revert that. I have to get that out of my energy. If she makes it to an elderly age, if she makes it to an elderly age, I'ma pay and get her the best place to be at. But she, I ain't gonna take care of her. I been told her that she was going to be put in on. Been told her ass that. <laughs> it ain't no surprise to her. <laughs> but she's going to be in a home. And I'm going to pay and make sure they, you know, they, they take good care of her. But it ain't going to be me. I'm not going to put that burden on me. Just how she had other people take care of me. Raise me. The folks don't raise you, baby. <laughs> but I don't hate my family. I just don't fuck with them. I don't fuck with folks, but I don't hate them. I don't hate that dude. Still love him. Not to the degree in which I loved him before. Not to the degree of three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Nah. But it's still love. Love is the highest vibration. If I want to be a high vibrational person, I can't hold hatred in my heart. If I want to be a healer, I can't hold hatred in my heart. Because then I will be transferring that to you. When we want to heal that out of you, right? So don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't be decided, be faithful. And that's when Jesus comes. He comes to me in those moments to remind me, stay in love, stay in peace, stay in tranquility, stay in joy. You know, I could, I, I'd rather feel dumb than feel hatred. I don't want to feel those strong feelings of being mad 
that fucks with you. That fucks with your beauty. It fucks with your skin. It fucks with everything. It fucks up the good vibrations, the, the blessings that come to you. And because I stay in a state of love, there's people who is loving and be like, I don't know you, but here, I want to make sure you good. I want to make sure you okay. That man don't know me for battles. And, and he still hear a little money in your pocket. And I pray that he gets that tenfold, ten times over. I, bl I pray that God gives him a, a miraculous blessing. And anybody else that gives to me. I don't care if it's a fucking dollar. I pray that that dollar turns to a thousand <laughs> for you. I, I pray he gets 60,000. Okay? 120,000. Okay? I watch God. Like, I be watching God and how God blesses those who bless me. Like I told you, when I'll stay with my aunt. God would give her extra money. God took money off of her rent. You know, God took money off her rent. God made her rent cheaper. You know, that's miraculous. God makes your rent cheaper. You know, in LA, my auntie is paying what my auntie is paying basically what they're charging for one bedroom for four bedrooms, two and a half baths. Her rent right now. It is equivalent to that to a one bedroom apartment right now okay they took money off of her rent when I went to go live with my aunt and uncle in their van she got her home clean you know, all this. I helped her husband out at his lowest, at his sickest. He's fine now. When I left, he's in good health. He good. His diabetes. He ain't had to take all the medication for his diabetes no more. That within itself is a blessing. You ain't got to take all these medications. They take your medication away. That's a blessing. And so you, you got to continue to do what God calls you to do, regardless of how people respond to it. Their response is none of your business. Their response is none of my business. How people, you know, how people move, how they act, that's none of your business. You gave love. That dude... He probably ain't never really experienced genuine love like that. But he finally got it. He got it. He may never experience a solid ass motherfucker, but he received it. You know? That's none of my business. Tiny earth. <laughs> I, I think I got a shit again. <laughs> but you know, don't harden your heart. Keep being loving. And take time. Take time with the heartbreak. Don't look for somebody else to fill that void to ease that pain. Take your time. It gets better. It'll all get better with time. I thought I couldn't live without you. Dun, dun, but it is too. Whatever Natasha, whatever her name is, say it. Oof. Tell me here. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hold on, that little pass. <sighs> it's funny because I love seeing the little uh, 
the uh, the park and recreation dudes, my little friends, they be rolling by. They be like, hey, <laughs> I'm like, hey, y'all, <laughs> so cute. Uh, I just love, I love black folks. I love us. I love, <laughs> I love us, and I hate that we have so much. I hate that there's so much rhetoric of hatred towards black men versus black women. Um, and mainly that is because of the space of, uh, of love, right? Because of the romantic sense, but. I love black men because they've been helping me out, bro. They've been looking out for me. Without it being romance. Without it being romantic, you know? Um, I love us. <laughs> And we are a race of love. We are a race of love. And I think we're so tired of life beating us down that we're starting to become angry and mean, hateful. And that's not us. We're not meant to be hateful. You know, and the people we should be the most loving to is each other because we understand each other's struggles. You don't want to adopt that of the colonizer of hatred. Hate not going to get you nowhere. You think it will, but it's not. Y'all be thinking fucked up people are still winning. But them same folks can't sleep at night. They struggle with sleep. They struggle with other shit. They got to they gotta get everything. Those are the main people who don't believe in miracles, don't believe in the supernatural, don't believe in God's provision, providing, you know? Wait for love, sometimes you'll get the chance to love, wait for love, wait for love. Just because you haven't gotten the love you you believe you deserve, that don't mean you start acting a fucking fool. Don't do that. You wasn't set up for that. Continue to rack up your good karma. God got it. God will return it. Better than what you wanted to receive. You wanted to receive some flowers. God and gave you a whole place. Got you a car. Oh man. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Oof. I already went to McDonald's. That's how I, I would have to probably walk to Target and shit to take this shit. <laughs> Ooh, stomach. That's the funny, that's the crazy thing is shitting in public now. That is something I ain't never did before. But shitting in public has been something I had to get used to. <laughs> Taking a booby <laughs> in a public space. You know, I had not shit for like two days. So I think it's all coming out. Like, hold on. There's more. There's more where that come from. <laughs> we got some more. Um, but that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I'm um, sorry I made this video hell alone, but that's all I wanted to say is that while we continue to go through these Jesus series and going through Jesus, it's not for us to be trying to adopt those Christian mentality. You know what's funny? The girls that I be watching on YouTube that are Christian based, um, they be throwing shade and shit, but uh, about the spiritual girls. But I'm like, you're doing the exact same thing we doing. You said a song came to you, you clear audience. They be like, oh, I saw this song. This song came on the radio and then they gave me this message. That's what we do. Oh, I read this billboard. This billboard gave me a message. That's what we do. <laughs> we don't always have to pull the cards. I saw these numbers. 
they be talking about angel numbers, but, like, but this is not an angel number. This is about Hebrew. You just went another way. And so we're not going to be having wars, black women, and wars against spirit, Christianity versus spirituality, baby. It's the same thing. One is just more connected to the Holy Spirit and act, and do deeper things with the Holy Spirit than you do. And y'all know I ain't, I ain't for the retaliation magic. I'll do a reversal. But I ain't for that hexing shit. I ain't for that hexing shit. For that putting putting a putting a picture of the shit in a jar and shit. I ain't doing all of that. Shit ain't never that deep. If I'ma start doing some some dark magic, that's for some some revolution shit. That's for some the system's gonna change. And that ain't gonna be happening till a little bit later in our years. We shouldn't be doing all of that until five years when they start attacking us. Um lastly. I know that the girls love talking about aliens and this connection to the aliens and, and all the things and saying, are we aliens and all of that thing? Shut the fuck up with that. Because I was watching Suicide Squad. When I was watching Suicide Squad, she said the most powerful one we got is this witch. And this witch got, got uh, connections to other realms and shit. If you got connections to them, shut the fuck up. Because if they already have a space force, what do you think they're going to do to you? When they start talking about this war against the aliens, they're going to start looking for y'all. They're going to start saying you a threat. So you just like, oh, I'm just a spiritual person who believes in God. You don't tell. You don't say all. You don't talk too much about that. If you do, that's great. But be quiet about that. And be quiet about your connection to the extraterrestrials. Because when they ready... To really go full force on that shit. They still could get the people with just regular foreign affairs. I was watching, I was, I have read this post and these people was like, y'all ready for them to start acting a fool with these, 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 uh, that was, it was a racist one. That was like these little hooligans <laughs> start acting a fool and start rioting. They're talking about your black asses. <laughs> and uh, police brutality and you you rioting uh, but somebody was like I don't think they're going to do race this time I think they're going to keep it with this foreign shit and so this year this summer it's probably going to be an outrage between people when it comes to this Gaza shit but I told y'all don't indulge in that shit however they waited again for black folks to act up and cut up. They waiting again. But after, I think they got like maybe like two more years, three more years to keep with that before the threat be about the aliens and then the threat be about the diviners. Now I told y'all to read Children of Blood and Bones because it will show you how we're going to have to start hiding. Our abilities. All that shit. They're gonna say you a big threat. 
to the American people. So, I was that too. I just wanted to say that. But she was like, I never got to finish the movie. <laughs> I never got to finish the movie. I think I only watched like maybe like a good 30 minutes of the movie, maybe an hour. Like, I just watched the introduction. <laughs> Introducing all of the different villains and stuff that they were calling. They're gonna call you a villain. So, chill out on that alien shit. Wait for the secret meetings. <laughs> when we start having secret meetings, that's when you, you, you talk about it. But don't be talking about you got alien DNA and shit. Be careful with the indigo child the star seed and shit be careful with identifying with those things yes you can have you can have those characteristics look into them read into them it's very fascinating it's very fascinating reading into like your abilities and all that but the real aliens It's the awakened black folks. They been had a secret task force against you, right? It's just gonna continue. It's gonna escalate. And a lot of folks that they gonna get you with is them diehard Christians. They're gonna be the first, the first to get you, <laughs> right? The first to, to be on the front lines with this war against you. Be careful. Be careful with me. It's not a threat. It's a warning. Whose feelings that you hurt and harming. Would you don't wish the whole world if it is worth the girl that you're losing. Be careful with me. It's their loss that they lost you. It's not your loss. It's theirs. So again, don't harden your heart. It's a blue jay right there. Look, look at me. Not looking at me, but I'm looking at it. <laughs> But it's Blue Jay right there in front of me. Um, you know what that means. Good things, good things, good things. So God's ready to bless. God's ready to turn, turn over the leaf. Turn it over. Hey, boo. Little squirrel. God is ready to turn the leaf over where you will receive the love. It's miraculous ways and ways unimaginable. Stop limiting love to romance. Stop only looking for love in a romantic partner love could come from an animal you know god might start it off with giving me a dog and just it's just me and the dog okay just having love together okay it might be you and a fish okay your, your goldfish loves you okay your goldfish loves you more than anybody has ever done in the world but your goldfish and nobody love you your goldfish do right it ain't gotta be from no dick or no coochie <laughs> love is all over love is in the air right love is in the air which means as i breathe in love as i breathe in this air i breathe in love okay love fills my lungs right and it fills my lungs with the lungs is the air in the lungs helps with pumping your heart right it filters your blood <laughs> it restores your kidneys your liver okay Ooh, now my stomach don't hurt no more. Thank God. Okay. But yeah, it's probably that back in my <laughs> It's probably that back in my which but lean into love and watch God have people care about you and take care of you. My mom didn't give a fuck I was in a tornado. But God show people love and be like, you know what, you homeless. There's people who who wanna who 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 love, who sit in love and care and concern for you. And like I care and I cons I'm concerned about you. Here's love. Here's love for you. Here's here's a message of encouragement. Here's some money. Here's some food. Here's me just watching to make sure you good. Let me see where she at. Okay, she good. All right. She alive. She living. She fine. He fine. He good. He's washed over. He's protected. Every day you walk, you walk this earth protected and bullshit happening to you it's because you're geared, guarded and geared with love okay 
all right <laughs> so uh, navigate through those feelings let the lessons be learned right there's lessons always in our heartbreaks um there's lessons in our heartbreaks um but love even harder next time <laughs> love even harder love two times more the next person fall even harder in love with them be even more delusional okay <laughs> be even more delusional <laughs> but wait take your time um pour love get love through creation oh can i show y'all what i did so i told y'all i was gonna start my sketches and stuff like that for projects that i want to do um before i start canvases so i wanted to do like a beauty canvas so i did one of oh yeah yesterday i love the dress okay the dress was my favorite part right and so wanting to like put these into like oh i don't think i let this one dry right putting these into some some art forms like i was really more into the fashion like right <laughs> um all right give giving the offerings to olofi you give offerings to olofi the loa you do a creation right and so yeah love on your deities love on your spirit guides if you can't if there's not a person you can love on love on them love on children love on animals there's so much more love on a tree a tree give you some love hug a tree you know so yeah Whew. all right <laughs> bye y'all the window